Hello everyone, welcome to Wandering Art. Today I'm going to show you guys how I made this really fun little sunset beach painting and I'm doing some textured sand on it as well. That's what I'm working on here. And in this video I'm going to go a lot more into detail about materials that I use for resin and just how I work with resin. I've been asked to do it a few times so I thought today would be the perfect day. So for the um, little textured beach here, I've got some sand and I have some glue and I use half as much glue as I do sand. Then I mix it together and you put it all on the canvas first. It's a lot easier to shape once it's all on the canvas and it's all together than it is to try and shape it as you're putting it on. And you want to make sure that you're getting the corners and the bottom of the beach covered so you don't have any canvas peeking through your beach. And this will get a lot darker. I know it looks really white here, but as the glue dries, it is going to darken a lot. So canvas prepping. I like to spray the back of my canvas with water and let it dry. That will tighten the canvas. And then you can also put cardboard on the back of your canvas as long as it doesn't push up onto the front. And I also think it's very important to always paint your canvas before you do a resin painting. It's just going to make it all look better and flow much better together. So these are the materials I use every time I work with resin. These are my silicone cups. You can flip them inside out after the resin has dried, peel the resin out. You can wash it with soap, wipe it down with alcohol, let it dry. This is my stone coat countertop epoxy resin. It's a one to one resin. So that's one part of each mixed together for three minutes to get your resin ready to go. I like to use a stone coat countertop epoxy for paintings and I like to use it for molds as well. I don't recommend their art coat for molds. That's just my own personal opinion. I also like the resins Art and Glow. That's one of my other favorite resins. And I do like Pro Marine too, and it is a cheaper option, but I don't recommend Pro Marine if you're going to be doing a painting with a large white background or just a large white space in general. So you guys have seen me kind of laying out all the colors that I'm going to be using here. A lot of them are mica powders from the Color Cottage. The yellow is dandelion yellow, the blushing pink, and then the totally teal. Those are the three color cottage powders that I'm using. And then the orange is a candium orange. You see that right here. The um, purple is a sapphire purple from Lorez, and it is also a mica powder. And then the other blue that I showed you is a bath bomb mica powder that I mixed with the totally teal. I know that's a lot of colors for this really pretty sunset pour, but I am going to list all of my materials in the description below, and I'll kind of list them in the order that they are on the painting so it is easier, and I will have links to all of my materials where you can purchase them and just where you can see them in general. So I've already mixed up my resin here in one of my mini silicone cups. I want to say that I used about 40 milliliters for this painting because the painting is only a 6x6 canvas and I also have sand taking up a lot of it. So first I poured clear and then the blue that you saw me was the totally teal in the mica powder and the one I'm pouring now is the sapphire purple from Lorez and I'm just going to heat these up and mix them together and then I will go ahead and pour my other colors. And I'm kind of using this little spoon here to blend all my colors together. Oh, another thing I want to mention, if you're starting out resin right now, you're probably not going to be able to find a lot of supplies that you might usually need, like gloves. Even if I found latex gloves right now, I am not going to buy them because I would rather a hospital or somebody who really needed them gets them. So what I am using to mix my resin is actually my um, dishwashing gloves that I have that I reuse. So I'm just using those when I pour and mix my resin. You can use anything. You could use plastic bags to cover your hands. You could use your actual gloves that you use in the winter. Just I wouldn't recommend using them when you're pouring it on the canvas because then you could get little fuzzies in your resin. But just so you know, any gloves will work. It's important to wear gloves. 
and a mask. I know it may be very hard to get a mask right now, but hopefully everyone has already has a mask if you're working with resin. And you could try looking for like a spray paint mask. That is what I use. And I think that those are still available at most places if you need one. So I'm just heating up my colors here. You saw me pour the pink, which was the blushing pink, the candium orange, and now I am pouring that dandelion yellow. And I'm just heating them all as I mix them together. I want to mix them together because in a sunset, you know, it's not just straight lines. It's all definitely mixed together. A good rule to remember when you are picking out colors and mixing colors is you only want 10% color to resin. No matter if it's paint, powder, whatever, you want 10% color to resin. Now, once you have worked more with um, different pigments, then you might find you want a little bit more powder or a little less paint. But when you're starting out, just always remember 10% color to resin. So I am going to be using some white in this layer. I do like to use white in the first layer and the second layer that I do for ocean pores just because I feel like it adds a lot of depth. And um, I used to not even do two layers, but I like to do it because I like the depth that it brings to just have the white kind of spreading out in the clear for the second layer. I really like how it looks over the colored layer. So that's something that I've started doing. In this painting, you'll see that I added more clear to the bottom here before I put the white. And I wouldn't recommend doing that because you'll see that I did have a little bit of trouble pushing the white from my first layer down onto my sand. And you really want that to happen. You want the white to go down over the beach. You want it to look like waves kind of coming onto the beach. So I don't recommend putting too much clear there right before your white. Because um, if you're worried about the colors kind of blending together, if you are going to use that second layer, then you don't need to worry too much about how your white looks on this first layer. So I ended up adding a lot of white to the bottom here around the beach area for my second layer. And I'm just using my heat gun. I put this really cool attachment on it um, to kind of help me blow the white down. You guys will see it here in a second. I really love this attachment. Um, you can buy a heat gun that has a ton of attachments and this is probably my favorite attachment ever. So this is the second layer and I don't think I mentioned at the beginning for people who are wondering how much resin to use. What I do is you can go to Google, look up resin calculator, and there will be, um, it's a calculator, it's on the Art Resin website, but you can type in the dimensions of your canvas or whatever it is that you're going to be pouring on, and it will give you the amount of resin that you need to cover that surface. Now sometimes if I'm going to be using a lot of different colors, I will use a little bit more resin because when you're pouring it into cups or lots of different cups, then you may waste a tiny bit. So it's always good to use a bit more. If you're just doing like a clear coat like this and maybe just adding one color, then I would say that that is the right amount you're going to need, maybe even less if you're doing just a real thin layer. And it's always, um, I want to mention that if you're doing coasters and you're using that, just remember that that is the amount that is supposed to cover one layer when you're looking that up. So you may need to use more than that if you're doing coasters especially if they're going to be thick coasters. So remember that when looking it up. So you guys saw I'm just using that same satin white acrylic paint and I'm just kind of blowing it around. I actually think I used too much white on the bottom there because I couldn't see the blue as much as I wanted to. And while I did like the little cells I was getting, I just thought it was too much white. So I do end up pulling off some of the resin on the bottom here just kind of scraping it off with my little spoon there and um, just kind of dragging the spoon through to kind of go get the resin to flow in the way I wanted it to. Less is always more when working with white. I say that all the time and I know that and then I use too much white. If I had done that on the first layer where I had used way too much white, I would not have been able to scrape it off without having to scrape the whole painting. So it's always good to remember that less is more when using white and to not use too much. 
If there are questions that you have about resin that I did not answer, please let me know in the comment section below and I will definitely try to answer all of your questions. Um, a few other tips that I can give you guys are to warm up your resin before you use it. Always make sure that it's warm. If it's not warm, it, you'll still be able to use it, but you're going to get a lot of bubbles and it's going to be hard to mix. And if then if you don't mix it right, it might not set up right. So it's always important to make sure that your resin is warm and mixed. You can see here, I'm just like pulling off a ton of white. And then I'm going to go back through and kind of um, just use the spoon to get the white to go in the direction that I want it to go. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more resin artwork. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And um, I will be doing a second um, part where I explain stuff more um, with packaging. I have had that question a lot too to show about packaging. So that will be coming soon. I think I'll probably do that with a coaster video. Um, make sure you guys stay tuned and check out the little videos at the end of what it looks like. And pictures of some close-ups of the really cool designs I got. And you'll definitely be able to see what I mean by the depth of the white over the colors. I really, really love doing a second layer whenever I'm doing an ocean pour for just the white. Um, you guys tell me what you think. Do you like the piece? And do you like these little minis? I really think I might do more of these little mini canvases, especially ocean scenes. So I will catch you all later. Thank you guys so, so much. I hope you guys are staying safe. Have a good day. Bye.